everybody. It's Ashley Fields with Yoder Us, and today we're going to be painting our Got Candy Cauldron. I just now realized that I completely forgot to uh, turn this camera around, so let me fix that right quick if I can. Sometimes the icons aren't always there when I'm live. Hey, Debbie, how are you doing? I'm so glad that you're here. I got that camera flipped around, so you already know whenever I have that camera flipped around, it, it kind of weirds me out. It looks totally weird on my end, um, like a, a crazy clown kind of mirror image I'm seeing. Uh, I have that ring light turned down a little bit tonight because we've been having a lot of issues with the lighting, so if it's too dark, let me know and I'll turn the lighting up a little bit. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I am trying to get my comments pulled up. There we go. Okay. All right, y'all, what's your favorite Halloween candy? I was really thinking about that earlier and I don't know, there's such a toss up. It's, um, oh, I love Snickers bars or uh, uh, Starburst. I mean, I can really go all over the place, but I think my favorite that my daughter gets sometimes in her candy is those um, trolley eggs. They're like the trolley sour worm, but eggs. Oh my goodness, those are my favorite. So let me know what your favorite is. You guys are coming in. I love to just kind of hear the differences that everybody says. I think Zach would have to say like maybe Almond Joy would be his or Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. He might, he kind of can vary too. We get in different moods, so. Uh, Y'all, it's the last day in September. Hey Carla, how are you, honey? I actually called my mom today about five o'clock and I was like, oh, you know, what are you doing? I haven't got to talk to you much. We've both been really busy. And, um, you know, we were just chit chatting. I was like, yeah, I'm ready for Zach to come home. We're gonna lay down, we're gonna go to bed early. And then she goes, you have a live tonight. And I was like, no, I don't, I have a live tomorrow. And she's like, um, uh, I'm not sure. So I go check the, uh, I check the calendar and sure enough, y'all, I had a live tonight. And so I didn't know till about five o'clock, nor did I have this even painted at all. It was still raw wood at five o'clock. <laughs> so I was working kind of feverishly and then hopped online and ordered Pizza Hut tonight because I totally, it just slipped my mind. I've been going live on Thursdays a lot. So going live on a Wednesday just kind of threw me off today. And I said, oh, I don't have a live. And I, I thought I was gonna go lay down and watch this Joe Exotic uh, documentary we filmed, or I mean, we recorded. And uh, yeah, nope, not happening. So I'm glad to be here though, y'all. I just had my days confused this week. And um, I'm really glad I called my mom because had I not called her, I would have not even, I would have not shown up tonight. I would have not been here at all because I wouldn't have known. So, hey, Amy, hey, Victoria. I'm so glad you guys are here. <coughs> Thank y'all for joining. <coughs> it has been nine days of being sick <laughs> and I'm still sick. <coughs> Excuse me. So forgive me. I know I sound stuffy. Um, I think it's the ragweed in the air. It has just really been bugging me. My allergies are out of control. Yeah, Debbie says I thought it was tomorrow too. See, that's why. That's why, because I always am live on, on Thursdays. And I thought tomorrow too, uh, but I was wrong. My bad. I'm really, really glad I called my mom. That's, that's probably why I was like that nudge there, you know, where it was like, hey, just call your mom. Yeah, I needed to call her because she needed to remind me about something like we always talk about because she's always saying how she has to remind me about everything, which is true. <coughs> I definitely don't fault her on that one. All right, y'all, I'm using a, a Royal Gold Shader number 12, the soft grip that we have in store. Actually, I think we might be sold out of these. I'm not 100% sure. Um, these bubbles are kind of small when it comes to the larger brush that I've been using a lot of lately, the number 16. So I needed to switch to the a smaller one, and this is a number 12. Now, also, I think some of, some of y'all who have been watching for a little bit you guys know that I like to break in my brushes and then basically just use that brush once it's broken in until it absolutely falls apart and there's nothing else that I can really do with it other than throw it in the trash. And so I have not broken in this brush like I have my larger brush, that number 16. And I think that's really why you guys see me use that number 16 so often. It's because it's just what I'm most comfortable with. 
And so um, this one's not gonna have as dark or as thick of shading as my broken in brush would, but I kind of like that fact when it comes to these bubbles, because then it really helps to add more, almost of like a, a dimension to your shading strokes. And typically that's not really what I'm looking for, or I am, but not to this degree of a newer brush. Uh, but I'm really loving the effect that this has given me. Let me show you guys up close so you can see. Around the outer part, it's really thick, and then it gets a lot thinner. So a newer brush is a lot better at showing you those stroke marks, which I don't always care for, but when it comes to the bubbles, I'm loving it. So kind of glad I'm, I'm using this um, smaller shader tonight. But how is your guys' week going? I have really enjoyed these cooler temperatures. Um, I got up this morning and go to take my daughter to school and I wanna say it was like 52 or 53, which I'm in Conroe and that's a lot. Usually the temperature difference between like here in Pearland, Friendswood area can be like 10 degrees sometimes. Uh, we always seem to be a little colder. So it was a lot, it was chilly to me this morning. We had our uh, warmers, seat warmers on in the car and obviously the heater and everything. And then, um, Whenever I got home, we have thermometers in our shop on both sides of the shop. So whether I'm on my half of the shop, you know, painting, or I'm in Zach's half of the shop where the CNC is, um, I'm always watching those thermometers. And so, you know, we started off in the mid fifties and then it was like, maybe 15 minutes later is at 59. Maybe 15 minutes later is at 64. And I was like, holy cow, y'all. It's crazy how it gets really cold and then really hot and the quickness that the heat kind of comes in in the morning has just been, uh, it's been really crazy to watch. So, oh, y'all, I'm sitting here cleaning out my brush while I'm missing an entire uh, bubble here. Y'all should have been telling me because I'm over here not paying attention. Whoopsie, that's all right. Grab my brush back out of the water. I did try to get a little bit of that water off of this brush see now my stroke looks a little meh, definitely looks a little different there <sighs> i shouldn't have got my brush wet all right let me get this cleaned out i started with uh while i'm kind of sitting here getting everything prepped i started with one coat of white and then i came in on the bubbles and did uh lime green as my base and then up here on my candies i did um light purple light orange and seafoam green I'm trying to grab all my shading colors kind of get them out and ready let's see okay now i was using this orange earlier to outline pumpkins those um plaid and striped pumpkins i've been selling a lot of and whenever i'm outlining i always have more water in my paint when I'm shading, I don't have as much. I do still have quite a bit, but not near as much. So I'm needing to add a little bit more paint to this. Um, I like it a little bit thicker when I'm shading. Thinner is for outlining. All right, let's see, dip that corner. Kind of just follow the perimeter on this. Now I'm trying to remember, I have my example behind me. Okay, so I just did some kind of, um, zigzag looking wrapper lid right here all i'm doing is really using that corner of that brush and just kind of turning it sideways hey joy how are you doing hon i'm glad that you're here with me okay so i did zigzag on that one y'all i painted that sample for this one i don't know like two months ago and so it, it's uh i'm not quite remembering everything today let's see Kind of came in here like that. I think that's how I did it. Yes, I'm loving the newer, stiffer brush on this. I think the, the lines are turning out so much prettier with the bubbles and the candy. All right, so that was a little bit of shading orange on my light orange. And now I'm gonna grab some teal for my seafoam, my seafoam green. I love this color combination of all of these uh, colors together for Halloween. 
I just thought that some of these colors in our palette use, were used so well together with this. Sometimes whenever I'm trying to come up with a specific, um, or kind of fulfill a specific picture I have in my head, my paint that I have here at the house doesn't always necessarily work. So then I start mixing stuff. Uh, but I really liked this palette without having to mix anything. It's all colors that we already have. So this is just your regular teal number seven. Again, I'm trying to clean that water out of that brush because it's a newer brush. It definitely doesn't need as much water as an older brush would. I am going to have to get out my blow dryer here in a minute because the fact that I kind of uh, learned about this live tonight at like five o'clock today, I didn't have time to make multiple um, multiple um, examples. So I definitely will have to do a little bit of blow drying today. I think it was my live on uh, Monday in the um, academy. I had multiple samples kind of ready and it made it so nice. I didn't have to blow dry and I felt like it went by kind of fast and didn't really have too much, um, too much in between, I guess you could say. Okay, I'm trying to make sure that I'm keeping consistent with my sample. Hey everybody, I hope everybody's doing good. Y'all, what is your favorite Halloween candy? I wanna know, I have to know. Um, I'm going to say if you ask me today, what is that, um, gosh, it's like nougat with peanuts, uh, Baby Ruth, there you go, I almost couldn't think of it, Baby Ruth is something that just sounds really good, I want to know what y'all's favorite is, because every year on Halloween, when we take Carly trick-or-treating, you know, we have to inspect the candy and of course, uh, steal out a few for ourselves, so, uh, that's kind of one of my go-tos, and anything nerd-related. I do love nerds. Those are one of my favorites. <coughs> hey, Joshua. Hey, Joy Candy. I'm so sorry, y'all. I haven't gotten a chance to say hello to everybody. I hope everybody's doing good. Still using a uh, Royal number 12 uh, shader or flat wash brush. Kind of sticking with my perimeter lines. And then coming in and adding a couple of swish marks. Now, the sample I did behind me is a lot bigger, oh, well, maybe eight inches bigger than this sample. And so, on my lettering, I, I was looking at that earlier, that's going to be a little harder on these little pieces for me because I have just such a heavy hand. So, I'm going to do my best uh, to make the lettering look the same, but uh, with that difference of um, about eight inches in it, it does make a really big difference on my end of what it looks like and how it feels. Carla says, anything chocolate. Yes, I get that. Joy, Heath Bar and Score. I love Heath. It's so good. I love it. Hey, Don, how are you, honey? Uh, Angie says, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Angie, a thousand percent agree, but I have to have them in the refrigerator or the freezer. I kind of prefer it like in between freezer um, temperature and refrigerator temperature, but I have to have it cold. I love Reese's Peanut Butter cold the best way. I feel like it's the only way. When we lived in Colorado, uh, I was on a Reese's peanut butter kick for a while and I would take them and set them outside and it would be snowing and you know all that nice and cold and just wait a little bit and then you can go gra grab your perfectly uh, cold and refrigerated uh, Reese's peanut butter cup. It's one of my favorite things. I gotta get some of this dry just so I can come over top of it with our outline and I'm not pulling a lot of paint and changing the color of the outline. So obviously direct sunlight's gonna be a lot better whenever it comes to drying paint and, or, or you know just letting it sit and giving it a little time. Um, in my normal life, whenever I'm painting, I literally have never pulled out my blow dryer. Uh, I wait for it to dry naturally. So I just want to kind of throw that in there and let people know. Angie says, I've never tried them cold or frozen. Oh my goodness. Honey, you have got to. So next time you get some, okay, put it in the fridge. Maybe not the freezer because the freezer makes it really hard. But put it in the fridge and just try it and 
Let me know what you think. I feel like you're going to be a changed woman. I have to have cold peanut butter cups. Anybody else? Am I the only one that likes cold peanut butter cups? Or it can, it's the same thing with like mint, like uh, York peppermint patties or something like that. I like them cold too. Maybe I'm just weird like that because I'm also somebody who likes popsicles and ice cream and I, I chew the ice cream. I don't let it just melt. Like I literally chew it. And um, I've had so many people over the years be, ask me like, how do you do that? That's, you're, you're freaking me out. How do you chew ice cream? It's like, that's just how I like it. So I don't know. Maybe I'm a little different on that. All right, y'all, I am getting me some black so we can start doing our outline. I need some water. Oh, there we go. Add a little water here. I'm worried that my script liner is really broken in and it, it gets pretty fat and wide. So I might end up having to switch to a newer one if, I'm, if my lines get a little bit too thick because this Pattern kind of has a lot going on in small areas, so I'm gonna want that brush to be a little thinner. Carla says, peppermint patties in the freezer. Yes, thank you. See, they are so good in the freezer. It's the best. Honestly, like once you start eating chocolate or candy cold and you like it, it's like you'll literally come home from the store and wait for it to get cold. You won't even touch it because you know it won't be near as good at room temperature that it is when it's cold. So, all right, y'all, I am loading that brush a ton. I have it all over my brush. And I'm gonna start coming in here and just following along with these lines. I am trying to keep my lines a little thinner than I typically do, but I have a heavy hand. So I'm also somebody who might tend to start a little lighter and then as I go across it gets heavier and heavier and heavier See, already getting heavier. Oh, uh, Dawn says, hope I'm feeling better. Thank you. You're so sweet. I have, um, see, yesterday I seemed to be feeling a lot better. And then I didn't, I don't know. I'm just terrible about, like, I'm feeling better and I don't take my medicine. And so I've been taking, like, Mucinex and Allegra every day and, um, like, Sudafed and all sorts of stuff. Just trying to help kind of dry me up, you know. And um, yesterday, because I was feeling better, I didn't take the medicine. And so today I definitely felt, I felt a little more, ugh, you know. So um, I've been just staying home and trying to get a little rest. I did go lay down, or tried to lay down. I didn't even make it to the bed. Uh, I did go to go lay down earlier. And then my dog started barking and barking and barking. And I could tell somebody was outside with the way they were barking. And so, you know, I go to look out my office window uh, to look out front and UPS was here and it was those paint jars that I ordered. And so, you know, I had to come out here and um, take that delivery. So then I ended up sitting down and I started painting and Tony was here today. He cuts for me. He runs my CNC a couple of days a week. And uh, Tony goes, hey, I thought you were gonna take a nap. And I said, well, I was. And then um, UPS came and the dogs were, you know, barking and all that. So I came out here and then of course I just sat down and started working. So I intended on napping, but I never actually made it to the bed today. So <laughs> it's just, it's that time of year for us. It's just busy. We've got a million things going on and it's just not, the best time to be sick not like you can choose that you know um but i told y'all last week i stayed in bed last week for a full three days and that's unheard of with me so my bed had me for three days after that i gotta at least try to get something done 
Whenever you work for yourself, there's just so much more pressure. It would be different if I could just call into work and you know somebody else would cover my work and do my work for me. Um, but I don't feel that same kind of um, cushion that I do working for myself. You know, I feel like uh, it's like I'm on a trampoline and that the springs are coming off if I stop working. You know, it just doesn't it doesn't flow. So it's definitely different. But you know what? Honestly, though, working for myself has just been the most rewarding and amazing opportunity that I, I don't want to be complaining about it because I would not trade it for the world. It's amazing. Uh, so it's definitely been one of those goals, a lifelong goal that I was able to reach in an earlier age. And so I don't want to complain, y'all. I really don't. Yeah, I, I'm going to, I just took my, um, some of my medicine earlier, some Sudafed, but I need to go do, take the rest of my mixture, and do my Flonase. Okay, I'm trying to keep those lines a little, well, you know, on the lighter side. Not as thick as I typically do, but then as soon as I say not as thick, I feel like my brush goes down really, really hard <laughs> and does a thick line. If you guys would use a different color combination on this, let me know what you guys think might look better, uh, you know, is it in a different combination way. I would love to hear what you guys think on that too. Sometimes half of the battle whenever I'm coming up with a sample is really picking out colors. Uh, you know, because it's like you can go in a million different ways and you know, where do I wanna go? And sometimes for me, I just really struggle and I kinda go back and forth with myself, um, asking myself what I wanna do and I'm, you know, never, I don't ever really feel like I'm 100% sold one way or the other, but I do have to choose one way and so, um, I love to hear input from you guys, if you guys have any, or I also, whenever you guys post photos, obviously we get to see y'all's kind of choices and I just love seeing that too. Absolutely love it. I think it was Jamie earlier posted a photo of um, her three witches, the ice mill children. Oh my goodness, they were so darn cute. I don't know if anybody else saw that, but if you did not, go check out Jamie's photo. Absolutely precious. I love what she did. Uh, Melissa says, is your bristle bent up on the paintbrush? Yes, yes, okay. Melissa, this is what it's supposed to look like, and this is what mine looks like. These are the same exact brush but I've had this brush in use for about six months and I use this brush every day. I would say on average, this brush is probably being used, I don't know, maybe three hours a day, maybe four hours a day, two to four hours a day, every day. And so I'm literally use the same brush and it's bent like this from all the use because this is kind of that angle that I do it. And I've told everybody before, this is how I like it but that's how it's, it did look whenever I started. Um, this is the correct way. You know, this is what your brush looks like if you've just bought it from us. And it's the same brush. Um, I've just used, I've used the heck out of it. And um, I honestly, I strive to get my brush, my script liner to be like this because I can use this in the fastest, most efficient way for myself with what I'm doing. I do paint yard art for a living, um, which means I make my income obviously on hand painted pieces. And so I have to be fast. I have to be efficient with everything that I'm doing. And so this is just for me personally, it's like a personal preference, but when I my brush is bent like this, I have better control over it and I'm able to really fly around the room, literally in my chair. I'm just rolling, doing 20 different pieces at a time, making those same strokes because I use this thing so often. So it is broken in, really broken in. 
I'm trying to mix up this purple, but it is chunky. So that tells me I maybe left the lid off and some of it, half of it got uh, a little dried up and then I tried to mix wet paint into it. I don't know, but the chunkiness is not gonna work uh, when I am trying to do outline. Trying to just get a little bit of this light purple ready so I can get my words filled in. I don't know if you guys can really see the words on my, um, on my um, sample, but I know you guys can see the one behind me. All right, let's see. I love the contrast of the light purple with the black. Um, years ago, I was painting some Hocus Pocus pieces and playing around with coloring letters uh, coloring on the cauldron and the combination of the light purple with black to me looked the best and you could read it there's a lot of things that look really good up close but then far away they you can't read it you can't see it and so this light purple was just one of those that i loved because once it was dry it's still light enough that you can read but it also has a good contrast the lines on these letters are a little light uh, on the etching I don't have that guide almost that I usually have so I am really going outside of that line, but I know I've told you guys before, whenever I'm filling in lettering, it doesn't bother me that I go outside the line or it doesn't even have to be filling in lettering. I can be outlining anything. Uh, going outside that line doesn't bother me. I'm not trying to be that perfect with it because again, this is yard art. It's meant to be seen from a distance. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I've done, I spent many, many years or many long nights as well uh, trying to be perfect with stuff and at the end of the day all the hours that I really put into something trying to make you know these lines perfect by the time it's all said and done and it's in a yard and it's displayed it really you can't tell the difference so all the hours of agony over just being you know a little too OCD about something you know, proved to really not even matter. And so I've tried to get a lot better over the years of just kind of letting it go a little bit. Okay, I went over the line. Okay, maybe I didn't care for that. All right, no worries. We'll just keep on moving. You know, keep that boat on moving. Just like when you start getting frustrated with shading and outlining, just push on past it. It seems to be too, whenever I do push past kind of uh, those feelings whenever it comes to painting and just kind of getting at your wits end about the way something's turning out or maybe not turning out. Um, always, obviously, if you need to stop, then stop. But other than that, if you just keep on going, you'll get better. But it's the uh, quitting thing. You know, you can't ever get better if you actually stop what you're doing and, and don't keep trying. But I promise you, you're going to get better if you keep going. And, um, you know, like over here, my N and my D touched. And years ago, that would have really bothered me. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm going, okay, I don't even know if I'm going to come back and touch that part up. That's fine. Not a big deal. My lines weren't there, but who cares? They don't have to be perfect. Now I am kind of struggling to see these letters because the lighting, y'all, I don't feel old at all until nighttime comes and it gets dark and then I can't see anything and I can't drive anywhere because I can't see anything. It's kind of the same thing in here. I'm just sitting here really struggling to see these lines right now. I don't know that that's a good thing because I feel like the older I get, the worse it's going to get. And I'm not very old yet, so... That ain't gonna be a good sign when I am. Hey D, how are you? Miss D, I have your frog. I need to, I'm gonna take that to the store this weekend. I'm so sorry. I know I have, I've been owing you that for a couple of weeks now. 
All right, y'all, cleaning out the brush. All we gotta do is add a little white. Now, on the Got Candy, I really need to add white to it, but it's still incredibly wet, so I'm not going to tonight. That's gonna be something I need to do when it dries. Uh, but we will get white on everything else. Y'all, I've added a lot of white into these letterings while we're doing a live, and it just doesn't look near as good. You don't get the good stroke. I'm trying to get the wispy kind of stroke out of the white, and I'm not gonna get that whenever it's wet. It, it just starts to kind of blend, and I don't care for that look, so. Uh-oh, I see I splashed a little water over here. Let me try. Okay, I think I got that. Okay. Y'all on this, um, the little bubbles, I love to how uh, Victoria does her shading on her bubbles with light yellow. And I don't know if, I know some of you have seen her lives where she's done, you know, like the witch's cauldron or um, I think the hocus pocus or I don't know, all of the witch ones. But um, on all the bubbles, she did a uh, yellow, a light yellow shading on it. And it was gorgeous. And you know, you might think light yellow. I don't know that that's gonna look right, but it does. I Trust me, I promise you. So uh, anybody on here who's not gotten the chance to see her lives, go look up the three witches I smell children, the Hocus Pocus trio, and uh, oh, the ride or die. And check out her bubbles. They're absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I loved how those came out. Okay, let me see. I'm gonna try, this is just, uh, you know, my own handwriting, the C. I'm trying to kind of get the word candy on here, on the little black pieces in the middle of these. Um, and it's supposed to kind of get cut off. So really, I'm, I'm only getting the C and maybe the A, and that's about all you're gonna see on some of these. Um, my lettering is just a little, my handwriting is big, y'all. I try to be small, but I'm not so good at it. So I'm just kind of starting the candy, the word candy. And I'm trying to make it look like it's disappearing behind those bubbles. If you're somebody who can write smaller, maybe you can even get a few more letters in there. Me personally, not really gonna happen. So now in between all of this kind of a uh, shading and outlining, I'm just kind of going to come in and add, add some highlights in those open areas. Anywhere that you kind of feel like could use a little more of a touch to it. That white is always that piece that's really going to be the finisher. And without it, I just don't think anything is ever complete. Let me flip it around. I'm gonna do a couple of uh, swish marks around the cauldron. Whenever I'm doing swish marks on black, I really load my brush. This is what I would use if I was doing black outline, but when I'm doing white, I do the opposite. I load it and then really offload it. I don't want too much. Then I just dip the tip of it. I'm going for that kind of wispier line look. I don't want that to look too thick. And then uh, add a little bit of white to your letters and ta-da! Ooh, that lighting's kind of funky. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. I think maybe by next Monday I should be better. I, it's always a 14-day a thing around here. Let me show you... Uh, my sample. There we go. You can see, this is a bigger one, y'all, so it has a channel stake, but you can see the white inside of the letters, just a couple of light swish marks on the letters. Same thing that we all do for our highlights. And there we go. Thank you, Victoria. Victoria, I, I, you know, I told everybody at the beginning, I thought that my live, this live was tomorrow. I did not know it was today. And I talked to my mom about five o'clock and she told me it was today. And I was like, 
Oh no, because I didn't even have it primed. I'd, it was raw wood at five o'clock and I had to throw it together and get it ready. And so since I thought it was tomorrow, I'm a procrastinator. So I'm like, I got time. I'll mess with it tomorrow. And I was honestly planning on trying to do uh, the bubbles like yours, like, you know, get to play with it a little bit and me kind of try that technique out uh, with the light yellow. And since I had two hour notice because I didn't realize that it was today, um, I kind of had to stick with my original plan. So uh, Debbie, Joy, thank you all so much. Y'all are so sweet. Um, I, let's see, it is the last day of September. So obviously tomorrow we start October and I will be live in the Academy on Monday with the Happy Fall Y'all truck. So those of you in Yard Academy, you guys can catch me Monday at 7 p.m. with this pattern. Thank you so much. Uh, Victoria, I know you're coming in soon. Is it next, is it this Sunday or next Sunday? I can't say I remember when, uh, but I know Victoria's gonna be doing the uh, scarecrow face that she wrote, uh, she did the plaid hat with the um, sunflower. Oh my gosh, that was so cute. So Victoria has that coming up and then I have the Happy Fall Y'all truck coming up in Yard Academy. <coughs> so you guys can find us there. But thank y'all so much for coming in tonight. I'll see y'all Monday in the Academy. And I know Victoria will be in to see y'all soon. As always, keep sending us photos of the projects you're working on. And let us know if you guys need help or have any questions. So Sunday, Victoria says she's doing the scarecrow face. We cannot wait. So excited. So you guys tune in Sunday and see Victoria. And I will see you guys then. Bye, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your week.